Hey everyone, welcome to uh, Afterwards. Um, let's talk about the end of this campaign. So this was my prep for this episode. I have at the very top, make them fear the dragon. Um, because a lot of the time in campaigns, I've thrown dragons and people have melted them. I've tried to have like a dragon as a solo boss. Casey has melted a dragon. He like just like mowed through it in like a single turn as a paladin and he just like smoked it. And that very saddens me because it's like, this is supposed to be a boss, it's supposed to be a dragon. It's called Dungeons and Dragons. It's supposed to be scary. It's supposed to be one of the scarier things, but um, it doesn't always end up that way just because it's a game and sometimes you can just have a great strategy for dealing with them. Um, so my goal was to make sure that they had to split up. Um, so I had the, I had the big black dragon there to uh, just to be the main encounter, but the Wug Witch is still scary in her own right. And um, even though I played her a little comically and I had the thugs in there just to kind of up the XP uh, just a little bit and to, you know, like absorb some attacks and stuff. Um, I got to VoIP those guys back. That was great. I just was looking for the opportunity to do that. Um, I was a little frustrated at the very beginning when everyone was sitting in the entryway. I kind of just wanted to like push them because as a DM, I'm, I'm here thinking like, you can do it, you can do it. It's not that hard. Someone might die, but it'll be okay. Like it's only a CR seven. Like his acid breath is scary, but the rest of him is okay. Just get in because really had I had another recharge of my acid breath while they were all lined up there, like that could have been even more devastating. Um, and I even like gave, I went down the initiative order to like give everyone a chance to like get out of the way or to run. And they, you know, they wanted to, like I said, during my questions, comments, concerns, they kind of sat in safe space a little bit, which is um, something that a lot of the time you'll see in improv, cause I come from an improv background. You'll see it in improv when two people get on stage and they like stand like here at like a polite distance from each other and have a conversation. It's called safe space. And a lot of the time it's like either go and go do something else interesting or like get close. Cause pe hardly ever do people like talk standing like this. And when they do, it's almost never very interesting to watch. Um, and that's sort of here as we were in safe space. We wanted to have our cake and eat it too. We wanted to uh, not die, uh, but also still save the day. And a lot of the time that doesn't happen, especially at a boss. So I'm glad this boss felt scary enough that they, hesitated because that means I did my job as a DM to make the dragon scary. I hope you at home picked up on all the su subtleties of the story that I was weaving before I had, uh, I had Abigail Johns spell it out. Um, the dragon essentially, War Rung, um, is a young black dragon. She's an upstart. She's down here. She's trying to like make a name for herself. She's enlisted the marauders to get the time magic from Alon to reach into the future to grab her future already grown self and pull it back here into the um, into the present. So basically she's trying to, you know, prevent the waiting game. She's just gonna wait down here for 500 years while her big bad self comes back and it kind of creates a, a, a loop. She put, puts herself in a loop, but then she ends up 500 years older. Um, so that's what she was trying to do. I hope that came across. I didn't want to like spell it out until the very end. Um, <coughs> but uh, that's what was going on. The Marauders wanted to align themselves with her because they're kind of bad dudes as it is and they thought that this is a great opportunity to gain a lot of power um, and keep sort of this area of Marais uh, not only prosperous but get really prosperous because all of a sudden you're going to have this dragon who's going to be able to fly across the countryside and kill literally everything. Um, everything probably on the continent, uh, if it so chooses, uh, which apparently that was something that this one wanted to do. Uh, so let's see, beyond that, uh, and maybe it wasn't a challenge rating 21, maybe it should have only been an adult black dragon, but still same kind of thing. Um, let's see, what else? Um, oh, the bird people. The bird people are a result of uh, Clarion removing his guns. They are, I've kind of alluded to this on the wiki for a while. Uh, it was a question that came up kind of early on when I was doing some of the threshold history. Something Josh also was asking about. 
um, is why aren't there guns? It's the year 2015 and there aren't high explosives. So I had to ask myself the question like, why aren't there guns? Is it because there's, um, it, does black powder just work differently? Are the physics not there? But it's like, no, because I've had stuff that explodes when you light it on fire. So there's obviously some, the physics feel kind of the same. Maybe magic prevents it, but that's not really satisfying. So, or maybe people just haven't thought of it, but it's like in 2000 years, no one's thought of like finding this material and having it explode, especially with like wizards casting fireball and like watching people get impaled by shrapnel from it. Um, so the other thing that came to mind is what if there is an entity that is policing the preventing firearms from getting out. And so thus the Birdmen were born. Uh, they are constantly divining for the existence of black powder. And when they see it, they send somebody to go and make sure that it doesn't, um, it doesn't get out, that they stop it. It happened in Nod, I think like in the, in the 1500s. It's happened a couple of the times before, like when the bird people attack, it's a huge deal. Um, and it's kind of mysterious because they come, they like at City of Nod, they come, they sack the City of Nod, they like break in and then they leave. And of course that was some inventor in Nod, some Smith had invented a gun with black powder. Their divination machine picks it up. They send their huge ship out there. They, uh, they go and what's gonna happen probably to Clarion is they're gonna interview him, see what he knows about the construction of this. If they determine he doesn't know how to build these guns, they're gonna just take them. Uh, but if he, if they think he does know how to build them, then they're going to have to kill him. Um, so we'll see how that goes, uh, at a later date. But, uh, that was sort of my, my trade-off is like, because Clarion wanted his dad to be a character he's played before who had guns. And it was like, okay, but if that happens, if you take them, if, cause he took them out of the lead lined room, which I made explicitly clear that it was lined with lead. So he took them out, which means that it, it pings the bird men. They go up. Ah, that's the guns we've been looking for. They've been hidden. They send their task force out um, and they arrive a couple of days later. How they arrive a couple of days later uh, remains to be seen. Um, but now they have Clarion and Gilliman in its possession. I like that they are, uh, that the best friends from childhood are sticking together. I think that's such a fun bond and it means that we get Gilliman back. Although I'm kind of sad that we're gonna have to wait till we can come back to Clarion on our schedule to get Gilliman back. Uh, cause I've fallen in love with Gilliman, uh, and his crazy creepy spell casting. I love it so much. Um, uh, yeah, I'm excited to see what happens with, uh, with Jamie, uh, Renard and Slick. I, I think that there's a big change in Slick and it'll be interesting to see what that is. Um, but now, now that we've done this campaign, I'm kind of at the point where we have so many fun characters that... I don't even know how to, it, going so many different places, I don't know how to schedule them all. So we might have to do some, some Heroes episodes. It's gonna keep growing. Like I know. As long as we keep doing campaigns with new characters, it's gonna grow like eventually out. I love it. Out, so. Maybe, maybe, and there's other mediums, maybe there's more Twitter campaigns or there's more, um, there's more, or eventually if we had the schedule and we had the funding, we could technically just do a ton more campaigns. Sure. Yeah. If we, if if we have the viable time, if we, stuff. if it, yeah, That's we can make it work. That's the that dream. Is we dream. just do it all the time. <laughs> That's a dream. Um, so yeah, that's uh, those are all the things that I have. Um, I'd love, I'm sure you guys are gonna have a bunch of opinions, so please uh, leave some comments below. I'd love to talk to you guys more about this, what you thought of the campaign, what you thought, I did some funky stuff with time travel and guns in this campaign, which normally is kind of campaign breaking. So my hope was to like keep it a little contained. Oh, I have a sword with wishes out there. I rolled on the treasure table for that. And uh, I thought about not having it, but I lent it out. So uh, Eric, you have wishes now. Um, Let's see, well, Renard has wishes now. So let's see how that goes. Um, I'm kind of excited to see what that looks like. Um, I think I'm all good. I think that's all that I have to say. Thank you so much for watching Threshold and sticking around. Uh, we're taking a couple of weeks off just for our airing schedule and to give us a little bit more of a break, but we will be back in a couple of weeks with a brand new campaign, a brand new adventure, um, and some brand new elements. Uh, I'm continuing to grow this world and it's gonna get nuts. So stick around. I can't wait to share that with you guys and uh, I will see you soon. Thanks for watching afterwards. Uh, tweet me on Twitter, subreddit, all that good stuff. Thanks.